ओके डियर स्टूडेंट लेट अस रिज्यूम द क्लास लेट मी एक्सप्लेन अगेन दैट फाइनेंस कॉस्ट कॉन्सेप्ट जस्ट अ मिनट लेट मी एक्सप्लेन दैट फाइनेंस कॉस्ट कॉन्सेप्ट फाइनेंस कॉस्ट कॉन्सेप्ट वट इट इज फॉर एग्जाम्पल फॉर एग्जाम्पल मिस्टर एक्स इज द इंडिविजुअल हु इज टेकन लेट्स ए लोन ऑफ फिफ्टी थाउजेंड पाउंड लेट्स अज्यूम इंटरेस्ट रेट इज टू परसेंट अर्लियर आई अज्यूम दैट इंटरेस्ट रेट इज थ्री परसेंट नाउ आई एम अज्यूमिंग इंटरेस्ट रेट इज टू परसेंट स्टेप वन मिस्टर एक्स टूक द लोन ऑफ फिफ्टी थाउजेंड पाउंड स्टेप टू लेट से ही बॉट रेजिडेंशियल प्रॉपर्टी एंड देन ही इज गिवेन दैट रेजिडेंशियल प्रॉपर्टी ऑन रेंट ओके नाउ द इंटरेस्ट पेड ऑन दिस लोन इंटरेस्ट पेड ऑन दिस लोन कैन नॉट बी डिडक्टेड फ्रॉम द प्रॉपर्टी इनकम इंटरेस्ट पेड ऑन दिस लोन कैन नॉट बी डिडक्टेड फ्रॉम द प्रॉपर्टी इनकम interest paid on this loan cannot be deducted from the property income so what to do simply what we are going to do what is the interest amount what is the finance cost and either we say interest or finance cost is the same thing if we take 2% of 50000 if i take 2% of 50000 i am getting 1000 the finance cost is 1000 uh just a minute please one call is coming just a minute mm, yes nothing is everything is fine okay uh let's say the finance cost is 1000 okay we have taken now this finance cost cannot be deducted from the property income in case of individual who has taken the loan to bought the property residential property okay either he has taken to loan incurred any capital expenditure on the property or he has taken the loan for repairs on that uh, property so simply we cannot deduct this interest cost we cannot deduct this finance cost from the property income we cannot deduct this finance cost from the property income so what to do it's very simple we have to do only one thing first we will be calculating income tax liability and from that income tax liability we will deduct finance cost relief how it works please assuming assuming income tax liability assuming income tax liability is 20000 pound Just an assumption, okay? Deduct less tax relief on finance cost. We'll take one thousand twenty percent of this, which is two hundred. We'll get tax payable. So twenty thousand minus two hundred, we'll get tax payable of nineteen thousand eight hundred. We will get tax payable of nineteen thousand eight hundred. So I hope now you people have understood the concept of this finance cost relief. Is it clear to everyone? Is it clear now? I hope now it is clear. Yes, that is great. That is simply great. Okay. This was a little important concept. 
बट इन केस इट इट ओनली अप्लाइज नंबर वन इन केस ऑफ इंडिविजुअल नंबर टू रेजिडेंशियल प्रॉपर्टी इट डज नॉट अप्लाई इफ यू हैव टेकन अ कमर्शियल प्रॉपर्टी यू हैव टेकन द लोन फॉर द कमर्शियल प्रॉपर्टी वट एवर रेंट इज कमिंग फ्रॉम द कमर्शियल प्रॉपर्टी फ्रॉम दैट रेंट यू विल डिडक्ट द फाइनेंस कॉस्ट सो इट ओनली अप्लाइज नंबर वन पर्सन मस्ट बी इंडिविजुअल सेकेंड लोन हैज टेकन फॉर द रेजिडेंशियल प्रॉपर्टी there is one more concept of real estate investment trust just a minute please i have a call okay let's uh see this real estate investment trust what it says uh basically what is the function of real estate investment trust what it does it takes money from uh, let's say individuals and then they buy properties then they give those properties on uh, rent and then they give and sometimes they sell those properties so they earn capital gain so real estate investment trust an organization collects finance from general public and invest in properties let out rental income capital gain why do people invest in real estate investment trust these are the reasons expert management risk diversification for their investors pooling of funds mm question is there oh oh okay that's that is a mistake i oh. just a minute now it's fine i don't know what is happening Oh, I have no idea why it is doing this. I was I'm trying to do unmute, then it's mutes. But I think now it's okay. Now it is working. I believe it's working. Alhamdulillah. Finally, it's working. Okay. So let's see. Yes, it is working. Why do people invest in real estate investment trust? These are the reasons. one is expert management the second is risk diversification for their investors and third is pooling of funds obviously number of people they will be investing in real estate investment trust uh but main thing which we need to learn in learn is what is the rule of applying tax if the income is coming from real estate investment trust number one whatever you will be getting from the real estate investment trust it will be after 20% tax so you will be paying 20% withholding tax you will be paying 20% withholding tax that is you will be paying 20% in advance so whatever you will be getting that is that is going to be 80% but while doing calculation of income tax liability you have to gross it up for example we have received let's say 10000 which is 80% so you have to gross up how do we gross up multiply by 100 divide by 80 it gives you 12500 so while calculating income tax liability you are not supposed to work on 10000 you are supposed to work on 12500 advance tax will be payable as tax credit so whatever income tax liability comes from that we will be mine we will deduct the tax which we have already paid tax credit real estate investment trust trust dividend income from reit is like property income non saving income dividend income from real estate investment trust is like property income it is like non saving income so even though question says you have received the dividend income from real estate investment trust you will treat that dividend income as non saving income repeat whatever you have received as dividend from the real estate investment trust you will treat that dividend as non saving income 
let us quickly solve this question number five we have trading income 23,000 we have interest income 19,000 we have real estate investment trust dividend 12,000 we have normal dividend income 5,000 so let's see question so will the finance cost relief consume the no 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 finance cost relief has nothing to do with the bands finance cost relief has no connection with the bands you just apply just normally apply all the bands just calculate income tax liability so whatever your income tax liability comes from the, from that income tax liability just deduct the finance cost relief it has nothing to do with the bands okay just you need to remember one step let me take the question okay so let's uh, solve this question non saving saving okay one more question i believe okay it's okay dividend income and we'll go to total trading income is 23000 interest income is interest income is 19000 This is logically the dividend income for us, which is 5,000. The dividend which we have received, the dividend which we have received from the real estate investment trust, that will be treated as non-saving income. That will be treated as non-saving income. So, number one, we will treat this as non-saving income. Second, we have to gross it up. Real estate investment trust simply write the income take 12,000 what if nothing is mentioned whatever amount you are receiving it is net you have to gross it up so multiply this with 100 divided by 80 so 12,000 multiplied by 100 divided by 80 it gives you the gross income 15,000 so even though the question says we have received dividend from the real estate investment trust but that will be treated as non-saving income that will be treated as property income but we have to gross it up so 23,000 plus 15 38,000 19,000 5,000 and this 47 plus 15 is 62,000 here comes the total income. Now let us deduct personal allowance. 12570. So here comes the taxable income. 38,000 minus 12,570, I am getting 25,430, 19,000 and 5,000, 62,000 minus 12,570, I am getting 49,430. Let's calculate income tax liability. Basic rate band, non-saving, it is 25,430 into 20%. 25,430 into 20%, I'm getting 5,086. Okay, the limit for the basic rate band, before moving that, look at this amount. 49,430 means this individual is a high rate taxpayer. Whoever is a higher rate taxpayer, that individual gets nil rate band of 500 pound. Whoever is a higher rate taxpayer, that individual gets nil rate band of 500 pound. This individual is a higher rate taxpayer. Because this amount, the, the one which I have circled, it is more than 37,700. 
we have taxed the non saving income now we are moving on saving income which is 19000 and right now we are not having any starting rate band why because look at this taxable income amount in the non saving it is far more than 5000 so which means that you will not be getting any starting rate band for the saving income that is starting rate band is logically no more there it is already being consumed by the non saving income so now since this individual is a higher rate taxpayer so nil rate band nil rate band saving income is 500 into 0 percent obviously 0 the limit of the basic rate band is 37,700 out of this how much we have consumed we have utilized 20, we have consumed 25,430 we have consumed 500 37,700 minus 25,430 minus 500 so I am left with 11,770 I am left with 11,770 so basic rate band saving income 11,770 will take 20% of this Two thousand three hundred and fifty four. Two thousand three hundred and fifty four. Out of that nineteen thousand, how much we have taxed? From nineteen, I will deduct five hundred, which fell in basic uh, nil rate band. Eleven thousand seven hundred and seventy, which falls in basic rate band. So. 19,000 minus 500 minus 11,770 I'm getting 6,730 Logically this 6,730 falls in higher rate band This falls in higher rate band 6,730 We'll take 40% of this We'll take 40% of this Which is 2,692 We'll take 40% of this, which is 2692. Now let's move to dividend income. For dividend income, everybody knows one rule very well. Every individual in case of basic uh, nil, uh, dividend income gets nil rate band of 2000, irrespective of the individual's tax paying status. So nil rate band dividend income. 2000 into 0% is 0. So out of this 5,000, we will deduct 2,000. Remaining falls in higher rate band, dividend income, which is 3,000 into 32.5%. So 3,000 into 32.5, 975. Let's see what we are getting. You people should also be doing this question, okay, so that we should get the same result. I'm a human being, obviously I can make the mistake. So it's better there should be at least one or two students who should be doing the calculation also. So 975. So is there any question? It's very hard to concentrate with. Okay, okay. It's okay. I'm doing it. I should be thankful at least you people are attending the class because Otherwise, is taking uh, revision classes is very difficult. At least I need few students. Uh, just due to sacrifice of you few students, rest of the student they will definitely get the benefit, and you will be also getting the benefit, definitely, by clearing this paper. Inshallah. Income tax liability. But why this screen is blinking? I have no idea. Okay, from this income tax liability, we will minus, we will deduct the tax which we have already paid. Because in case of real estate investment trust, we included 15,000 in our calculation. We included 15,000 in our calculation even though we receive only 12. It means we have already paid 3,000 as tax in advance. We have already paid 3000 in advance as tax. So that will be deducted from here. Less income tax credit. 
फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड इंटू ट्वेंटी परसेंट सो हेयर कम्स योर टैक्स पेबल दिस इज योर टैक्स पेबल सो इलेवन थाउजेंड सेवन माइनस थ्री थाउजेंड आई एम गेटिंग एट थाउजेंड वन हंड्रेड एंड सेवन so i hope i have uh, made the concept clear arithmetically if there is any error that is acceptable but i strongly believe inshallah uh, there is no error now let's come to this furnish holiday letting okay dear student for furnish holiday letting it is extremely important that you must try to remember the conditions of furnish holiday letting so what are the conditions for the furnish holiday letting and what are the benefits you try to remember them it's very very important furnish holiday lettings all the following condition must be met for letting to qualify a furnish holiday letting number 1 the letting must be furnished accommodation made on commercial basis a very important point is accommodation must be a furnished holiday accommodation it should be on a tourist spot okay it should not it should not be in a or uh, somewhere in an industrial area or residential area where so many people are living it must be on a tourist spot so the letting must be furnished accommodation made on commercial basis number 1 number 2 the accommodation must be available for letting to public generally for at least 210 days during there the accommodation must be let to public generally for at least 105 days during there so at least 50% of 210 days at least 50% of 210 days this property must be given on rent should be should go on rent obviously during that the accommodation must not be let to the same person longer term this property should not be given to one individual for more for 31 days or more if this is the case then if you are if you have given a property to one individual for 31 days or more than that then it is called long term occupants if there are long term occupations then it must not total more than 155 days i did discuss earlier as well uh, obviously in the regular course what is the logic what is the concept of 155 days basically if we have given same property to mr a for 32 days for mr b 40 days for mr c let's say 31 days so then you have to make sure the total of these three should not exceed 155 days if it is not exceeding 155 days still the accommodation is a furnished holiday accommodation it is coming 103 so if you have given accommodation on long term occupations to number of individuals in that case you need to make sure in a particular tax year for which for a relevant tax year for which we are doing the calculation total must not exceed 155 because even a even there is a violation of single condition of furnished holiday letting then it will not be treated as furnished holiday letting and when the property will not be treated as furnished holiday letting you will not be getting the benefits of furnished holiday letting property if there are long term occupations then it must not total more than 155 days if a letting is classified as furnished holiday then following relief will be available number 1 losses on furnished holiday letting can only be carried forward to set off against profits on furnished holiday holiday letting in future if there are losses so simply you will be carrying you you have one option that is to carry forward the losses and set off against the future income from the same furnished holiday letting you will be getting capital allowances instead of replacement domestic item relief income will qualify limited earning for pension contribution capital gain you can defer the capital gain you will be getting the role if you are if you have if you have sold if you have sold a uh, furnished holiday letting if you have sold a uh, furnished holiday letting whatever gain comes that is actually a capital gain and on that capital gain you can get roll over relief gift relief etc why why would we get get basically these relief uh, there is a logic behind this because furnished holiday letting is treated as a business asset and all the reliefs are basically available only on business assets so that is why we get a uh, relief of this roll over relief or gift relief even you will get gift relief only on business assets losses from furnished holiday letting cannot be set off against any other income they can only be carried forward and offset against profit from the same 
फर्निश हॉलीडे एकोमोडेशन बिजनेस यूके लॉसेस कैन ओनली बी सेट अगेंस्ट फ्यूचर यूके फर्निश हॉलीडे लेटिंग इनकम एकोमोडेशन इनकम एंड ई ए लॉसेस कैन ओनली बी सेट ऑफ अगेंस्ट फ्यूचर ई ए फर्निश हॉलीडे लेटिंग सो यूरोपियन यूनियन if it is if your let's say accommodation is somewhere in the european union zone and that is your furnished holiday letting if you are having loss over there then in the same accommodation when you will be getting the profit only from that profit you will uh, set up the losses uh, but from my point of view i would say uh, students you just try to remember the conditions of the furnished holiday letting and after that you must try to remember these four points that what are the benefits if all the conditions of furnished holiday letting are met so here comes another concept extremely important concept relating to annual allowance of pension basically uh in uk or in any other developed countries of obviously where the governments they are so concerned about their people especially their uh, retirement age they do appreciate if you are contributing in pensions but uh hmrc has put a one limit for annual allowance for contributing in pension either you are contributing in occupational pension scheme or in a personal pension scheme or even in both now there are two possible conditions one either someone has contributed more than the allows limit which is given to that individual then what happens second if someone has contributed less than the available limit then what happens hmrc has imposed a maximum annual allowance in which it will give pension relief for tax year 21 22 it is 40000 a person is entitled for annual allowance if he is a member of a pension plan and we just two registered pension plan in our syllabus in a uh, one is occupational pension plan another is personal pension plan unused annual allowance can be carried forward up till 3 years on a fifo basis if there is any unused annual allowance we can carry forward that an unused annual allowance for 3 years for example if someone is having unused annual allowance in 1890 that person has not used the allowance so he'll be getting 40 40 40 so in the tax year 2122 the total 160 will be available the total 160 will be available if uh, that individual has not utilized annual allowance in the previous 3 years then in the tax year 21 22 he will be getting 160000 now the question is how do we how does this limit consume actually annual allowance limit will be used this limit will be used this limit will be consumed in these four ways let's say if employer is contributing for employee in occupational pension plan this limit will be consumed if employee contributes in occupational pension plan again this limit will be consumed employer's contribution also if employer is contributing in ppc for the individual this limit will be consumed an individual gross ppc also consumes this limit now look at this let's say in 21 22 we have 40000 annual allowance limit i am deducting all these four contribution if it still amount is positive then i will carry forward that amount if amount is still positive for example we just contributed all these four contribution are just 30000 so still 10000 limit is left so it's a positive balance so the remaining balance is positive so this will be carried forward for the next 3 years and it will be used on fifo basis but if the amount is negative means someone has contributed more than the limit if someone has contributed more than the limit and there is a negative amount then on that negative amount that negative amount the excess contribution then limit that excess is called annual allowance charge that annual allowance charge will be treated as non saving income and it will be taxed at the end of all other sources of income repeat if the answer is negative rather than positive if negative that represents excess pension contribution it is your non saving income 
if excess contribution is made then it is considered as non saving income at the end so if the answer is coming which is negative it will be treated as non saving income and it will be taxed at the end of all other sources of income for example look at this is small question mr n has an employment income 96000 Following contribution are made in the pension plan. Employee contribution, employee contribution in occupational pension plan. Let me tell you. If employee, if employee contributes in occupational pension plan, if employee contributes in occupational pension plan, that is treated as a deductible expense. If employee contributes in occupational pension plan, then it is treated as a deductible expense. if employer is contributing in occupational pension plan and let's say as well as in ppc for the employee then such contributions are exempt benefit for the employee so if employer is contributing for the employee either in occupational pension scheme or in ppc or even in both they will be treated as exempt benefits they will be treated as exempt benefits they will be treated as exempt benefits okay <clears throat> employer contribution in occupational pension plan is 15000 that is an exempt benefit mr n contribution in personal pension plan is 12000 the gross is 15 a very important point when an individual is contributing in ppc for himself or herself that contribution is not treated as an expense repeat when an individual is contributing for himself or herself in the ppc in personal pension plan that contribution is not treated as an expense in fact if individual has contributed in ppc so what benefits that particular individual will get benefit number 1 with the gross ppc amount basic and higher rate band will be increased second gross ppc will be deducted from the net income to calculate adjusted net income that is also a benefit so basically and the third benefit is whatever individual has contributed in ppc it is treated as 80% 20% will be paid by hmrc whatever individual has contributed in ppc it is treated as 80% and 20% will be contributed by hmrc so there are three benefit same benefit individual gets in case of gifted donation i'm just repeating the benefit with the gross amount basic and higher rate band will be increased adjusted net income reduces and whatever individual has paid it is treated as 20% 80% sorry 80% and 20% will be paid by hmrc Mr. N has no unused annual allowance. He does not previously. He does not have any an, an unused annual allowance. It means entire annual allowance previously he has used. So in the current year he is getting only forty thousand annual allowance. He does not have previous any unused annual allowance. So we just need to calculate tax payable. Obviously, employment income is a non-sim income. No doubt about it. Ninety-six thousand. from this 96 i will deduct employee contribution because whatever employee is contributing into occupational pension plan that is a deductible expense less employee employees contribution employees contribution which is 35000 employees contribution which I So ninety six minus thirty five. Employer's contribution is an exempt benefit. If you want to write, you can write employer's contribution simply is an exempt benefit. So we are getting sixty one thousand employment income. Let us deduct personal allowance, five hundred and seventy. I am getting taxable income, sixty-one thousand minus twelve thousand five hundred and seventy. I am getting taxable income, forty-eight thousand four hundred and thirty. 
I am getting taxable income 48,430. I am getting taxable income 48,430. Now listen and listen carefully. The basic rate band limit is 37,700. But in this 37,700, I will add gross PPC which is 15,000. So 37,700 plus 15,000. So basic rate band limit is now 52,000. 700 repeat basic rate band limit is 37,700 in this 37,700 we will add gross PPC which is 15,000 so now the gross now basic rate band limit is 52,700 so entire 48,430 entire 48,430 logically falls in basic rate band because of that uh, adding that 15,000 in the basic rate band limit so now the basic rate band limit is 52,700. So basic rate band, non-saving, 48,430, I will take 20% of this. 48,430, I will take 20% of this. 9,686. Basic rate band for the non-saving is, entire 48,430 is actually falling. Okay, there's a question. Sir, if you don't write employees contribution and less directly amount. No, 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 no. You have to show. You have to show. Do not deduct directly 35,000. If you are deducting directly 35, you will not be getting any marks. Please, you have to deduct 35. You have to mention which this 35 belongs to whom. So I'm not sending you to examination hall. Go and save the time. You're not supposed to save the time for shopping. Utilize the time, please. Okay. Now let me tell you one thing. Out of this basic rate band, which is uh, now the limit is 50. Let me check the question. It is okay. The limit of the basic rate band is 52,700. We have utilized 48,430. How much limit is left? 52,700. How much limit is left? 48,430. The remaining limit is 4,270. The remaining limit is 4,270. The remaining limit is 4,270. Okay. Now, let us check how much they have contributed. Annual allowance limit is 40,000. Previously, this gentleman does not have any unused annual allowance. So he has only 40,000. He has contributed 35. His employer has contributed 15. He has also contributed gross 15. So how much excess contribution is coming? 40 minus 35 minus 15 and 15. Dear student, excess contribution is coming 25,000. This excess contribution is called annual allowance charge. This is called annual allowance charge. This is called annual allowance. This is called annual allowance charge. So the limit of annual allowance is 40,000. From this 40, we have deducted all the contributions. Employees contribution 35, we have, dedu we have deducted employers contribution 15 we have deducted Mr. N gross contribution of PPC 15. So the additional contribution excess contribution is 25 and it is called annual allowance charge. On this annual allowance charge there is a question. On this annual allowance charge on this annual allowance charge we have to pay tax. On this annual allowance charge, we have to pay tax. And this 25,000 will be treated as non-saving income. This 25,000 will be treated as non-saving income. Now look at this. In dear student, in basic rate band, we have only the limit of 4,270. And I need to tax 25,000. So annual allowance charge 4 to 7 zeros in basic rate band 
Four two seven zero. I'll take twenty percent of this. Eight fifty four. Additional contribution, excess contribution, the annual allowance charge amount is twenty five thousand. Out of this, four two seven zero falls in basic rate band. So twenty five thousand minus four two seven zero. So twenty thousand seven thirty of annual allowance charge now falls in higher rate band because we have utilized the basic rate band. So I'll apply forty percent on this. I am getting eight thousand two hundred and ninety-two. So I just need to add nine thousand six hundred and eighty-six plus eight hundred and fifty-four plus eight thousand two hundred and ninety-two. So I am getting income tax liability eighteen thousand eight hundred and thirty-two. The income tax liability. I am getting income tax liability eighteen thousand eight hundred and thirty-two. So a very important concept is if you have contributed more than the allowable limit, the additional contribution is considered as annual allowance charge. On that you have to pay tax, and that annual allowance charge is treated as non-saving income, and it will be taxed at the end of all other sources of income. But let me clear one concept here. If in a question, let's say. You have non-saving income. You have saving income. Let's say you have dividend income, and let's say you have annual allowance charge as well, and you have termination benefits also. In that case, first you have to tax non-saving income, second saving income, third dividend income, fourth annual allowance charge. Now number fifth is going to be the termination benefits. Repeat. If you come across a question. Where you have, let's say, annual allowance charge as well as termination benefit. Take it like that. So, very important concept is then annual allowance charge will be tax ahead of termination benefits. The rule is termination benefits they will be tax at the end of all other sources of income. So, I'm repeating the scenario. If you have non-saving income, number one, you have saving income, number two, you have dividend income, number three, you have annual allowance charge, number four, and you have termination benefits, number five. So obviously, first you have to tax non-saving income, second you have to tax saving income, third you need to tax dividend income, fourth annual allowance charge will be taxed, and at the end you will you are supposed to tax the termination benefits. I hope I have cleared this point quite clear now. Okay. Now there is one more concept. What is that concept? Actually, we know that uh, with the gross PPC, actually we increase the basic rate band and higher rate band. But there is one concept, one rule that band should be increased exactly with what amount? Look at this. If if there is a gross PPC in the question, then you need to check band extended lower off. Gross PPC that is one. Higher off thirty six hundred. This thirty six hundred. Uh, uh, I have been watching this since my childhood. I believe. The second is total earnings, total relevant earnings. The sum of these three: employment income, trading income, furnished holiday letting. When we were discussing furnished holiday letting. So I think in the benefit one point was written that uh, income from furnished holiday letting is treated as relevant earnings. So this point is coming here. So if there is a gross PPC in the question, then the band will exactly increase by what amount? You need to check this. Lower of gross PPC, assuming the gross PPC amount is fifteen thousand. I'm just assuming. Higher of, let's say, the total relevant earning is twelve thousand. Assuming it is twelve thousand. So obviously, thirty-six hundred and twelve thousand. The higher of amount is twelve, but this is lower of. So now your basic and higher rate band will not increase by fifteen thousand. In this example, it will increase by twelve thousand. So it means whenever there is a gross PPC in the question, you need to check that basic and higher rate band will increase by exactly what amount. You need to check. Basic and higher rate band will increase exactly, but uh, with what amount? 
ओके दिस इज एक्सट्रीमली इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट डियर स्टूडेंट आई रियली नीड यूर यू हैव टू फोकस ऑन दिस इट इज एक्सट्रीमली इजी एंड एक्सट्रीमली इंपॉर्टेंट वाओ टू एक्सट्रीम्स आर कमिंग टूगेदर इट इज इजी इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट आई डोट टू से एनीथिंग एल्स रेस्ट्रिक्शन ऑफ एनुअल अलाउंस वी नो दैट the pension annual allowance limit is 40000 in uk in uk annual allowance limit is 40000 but every individual does not get the same limit of 40000 like we have studied in uk in finance act 2021 the limit of the personal allowance is 12570 but every individual does not get the same personal allowance you will find number of individuals in uk they are not getting any personal allowance because their registered net income is more than 125140 they won't be getting any personal allowance now let's talk about annual allowance of pension which is 40000 but every individual does not get 40 some of the individual it is possible they will be getting less than 40 now the question is what are the conditions when this 40000 pension allowance limit starts reducing it is starts reducing when two conditions are met how many conditions two conditions number one is threshold income must exceed 2 lakh threshold income must be more than 200000 how do we calculate threshold income simply threshold income is another name of adjusted net income because in atx we don't have gross gift aid donation concept so if i eliminate that gross gift aid donation concept then i can say threshold income is another name for adjusted net income so the first condition is if individual is having threshold income more than 200000 and the second condition is adjusted income is more than 2 lakh 40 adjusted income is more than 2 lakh 40 dear students if two conditions are met two both of them must be met only then annual allowance 40000 limit starts reducing what are the two condition another another important point dear student you need to remember these formats okay these are not allowed you cannot take them to the uh, examination hall you can take them these to the examination hall then that is only one way you can take them to the examination hall in your mind okay so threshold income must be more than 200000 adjusted income must be 240 how to calculate adjusted income that that is important take net income add employees occupational pension contribution we add employees occupational pension contribution add employers contribution into any scheme see employer can contribute for employee in occupational pension plan as well as employer can contribute employer can contribute in personal pension plan for the employee so either employer has contributed in oppc for the employee or he has contributed in ppc or he has contributed in both pension plans for the employee we will add all the contributions by the employer for the employee we will add all the contributions by the employer for the employee to calculate adjusted income so we'll take net income add employees occupational pension contribution and employers both the contribution you will get adjusted income so very important point is if the threshold income is more than 2 lakh adjusted income is more than 240 your annual allowance limit starts reducing it is like this for example annual allowance is 40000 assuming both the conditions are met let's say xyz individual is there who is having threshold income more than 200000 who is having adjusted income more than 240 so what happens less reduction assuming adjusted income is let's say 280 so i'll take 280 minus 240 i will take 50% of this i'm getting 20000 
so it means now this individual will not be getting annual allowance for the pension 40000 this individual will be, will be getting annual allowance 20000 but a very important point is if you come across a question let's say let's say the annual allowance is 40000 and let's say reduction assuming individual is having adjusted income 4 lakh 4 lakh i'm just assuming minus 240 i'll take 50 percent of this but i can maximum deduct 36000 static a very important point is annual allowance limit cannot go below 4000 annual allowance limit cannot be zero when we studied personal allowance personal allowance can become zero but annual allowance for the pension cannot be zero it can reduce maximum to 4000 because hmrc says we are not so cruel don't worry at all we will give you at least annual allowance 4000 so hmrc is at least taking care of you even though you are so rich because whoever is having adjusted income of 4 lakh pounds so that individual is very very rich but still hmrc is looking after that individual and HMRC is saying, don't worry, we'll give you 4,000, don't worry at all. Annual allowance cannot be less than 4,000 pounds. Maximum reduction is to 4,000 pounds. So note, if individual is having income 3 lakh 12,000, if adjusted income is 3 lakh 12,000 or more, then that individual will get annual allowance 4,000. But please remember one thing, two conditions must be met. One is... Threshold income must be more than 200,000. Another is your registered income must be more than 240,000. So, what I am doing, number one, I am just, uh, I'm going to close the video over here right now. And uh, there's Azan also. Then I'll tell you what to do in the next class, inshallah.